Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today we have the core box set of Arkham Horror, the card game. This was a demo copy that I picked up at, an, at a game auction. Uh, I got it for a relatively cheap price. And I said, you know what? Let me pick it up. Let me figure out uh, whether I like this kind of card game or not. So anyway, it's a board game of arcane mystery and supernatural terror for one to six players. Brought to you by Fantasy Flight Games. Oh, box upside down. Sorry about that. Arkham Horror, The End is Near, Massachusetts, 1926. Too long has the city of Arkham lived on its placid island of ignorance in the midst of the Black Seas of Infinity. Only a small handful of unlucky investigators dare plunge into that abyss to struggle against the ancient evils that threaten reality from every corner of this New England town. Arkham Horror is a cooperative game of mystery and terror for up to six players. Inspired by the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, each unique scenario puts you in the shoes of one of Arkham's investigators as they explore the streets of the city and work together to save humanity from unknown horrors. So you got some artwork that shows you what's inside the box. Again, this game is for ages 14 plus for one to six players. It's two to three hours in length. Of course, you get your fantasy flight supply cards. So the, the cards that are used in this game, you would use these type of protective card sleeves if you decide to purchase those. Okay. Again, this was released in 2018 by Fantasy Flight Games. For more information, go to fantasyflightgames.com. So there you have it. So let us crack this bad boy open and see what's inside the box. So you have a rules reference book and you have learn to play. So we'll start with the learn to play first. Welcome to Arkham, the game overview. Terrible creatures from beyond time and space threaten the city of Arkham. The players must join forces to beat back the approaching doom. If left unchecked, the ancient evils will rise up and destroy not only Arkham, but the entire world. Arkham Horror is a cooperative game. All players are on the same team and win or lose the game together. Each player controls an intrepid investigator, one of the unlikely few who have become aware of the growing threat to our world. The investigators explore the city, encountering places, people, and creatures, both mundane and supernatural. Through these adventures, the investigators hope to gain the clues and resources needed to confront and ultimately thwart the ancient ones. Okay, got to learn how to play booklet also, which you just talked about. So we've got a bunch of components for this game. Set up, choose scenario, prepare board, and encounters. Prepare the event deck. You have an event deck holder there. Create monster decks. Create mythos cup. Different card backs. Mythos tokens. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to create a mythos cup. Continue moving forward. You're going to create a headline deck. Prepare assets and display. Prepare token pools. Lots of tokens. Prepare the archive. Choose the investigator you want to play. Tells you what the role of the investigator is. Starting possessions, starting space, your final preparation, spawn, starting clues, place starting doom, spread doom once, final scenario setup. You also have tracking your turn, the codex, playing the game. There are four phases, action phase, monster phase, encounter phase, and mythos phase. To win the game, at the start of the game, it is not obvious how you win. You should begin by investigating every lead and studying the clues to unravel the scenario's mystery and discover a way to fight back against the encroaching doom. The cards in this codex C sidebar provide you with the objectives that help you progress the scenario. The first objective in approach of Azoth on card number three is to have three clues on the scenario sheet. After you complete your first objective, a card is added to the codex that provides you with a new objective. Continuing to complete these objectives eventually leads you to victory. Approaching clues, warding doom. Core concepts, skill test, modifying test, damage, and honor. Being defeated, and examples on the side bar for you of how to do all those things. 
again, more examples on the left side, you have your action phase, you have your move action, your gather resource action, you have your focus action. Again, your force tokens, and here are your icons, ward action, attack action, evade action, research action, trade action, component actions. You're gonna be delayed. Again, examples for everything you're just talking about right there. You also have monster phase, you have monster stage, ready, exhausted, engaged. Steps of the monster phase, ready monsters activate, hunter patrol and lurker, engaged monsters attack, exhausted monsters ready. Again, examples of how to read those cards, what's included with those cards. Then you have the encounter phase, encounter benefits, finishing the encounter. Again, on the right hand side here, more examples of everything. Mythos phase, spreading doom, spawning monster, read headline, spawn clue, gate burst, reckoning blank, replenishing the mythos cope, uh, cup, excuse me, adding mythos tokens, additional rules, items, allies, and spells, the display, hands, casting spells, assigning damage and honor. And there's direct damage and direct, direct damage and direct horror, again, Break down the cards, discarding cards, magic and the mythos. It's all explained to where all the icons are and what they all mean. And then the anomalies, playing anomaly tokens, anomalies and doom, removing anomalies, anomaly encounters, and the credits of all the great people who brought you this game. So total pages for rule set, we're talking 15 pages right there. And there's your core rule book. And you have a rules reference book, which is also quite hefty. Using the document, the golden rules, the setup, the choosing of scenarios, board, uh, placing, uh, preparing your board and encounters, preparing event decks, creating monster decks, mythos cup, headline deck, prepare assets and display. So it's a lot, a lot of information in this book. It talks about the different phases, what the round instructions are, the action phase, which we just talked about. More information on monsters. The setups, encounter phases, the mythos phases, and of course, end the game. It says here, there are many ways for a game of Arkham Horror to end. However, many of those ways depends on the scenario and the cards and the chaos. Okay, and the codex, winning the game. There are no default ways to win the game. You must progress the cards in the codex in positive ways until one of those cards states that you win the game. Winning the game typically requires gaining clues from event encounters researching those clues and depending on the clues from the scenario sheet to resolve the effects of cards in the codex. And then you have lots of ways to lose the game. There's only a single default way to lose the game, but there are multiple ways to lose the game if cards in the codex progress negatively. Losing the game typically happens because too much doom accrues on the board, causing doom to be placed on the scenario sheet, which causes the cards in the codex to progress negatively. The players also lose the game if every investigator available to the players is defeated devoured or retired. If there are no remaining investigators for the players to use, they lose the game. Then we have a rules glossary. Different kinds of tests, actions, anomalies, archives, assets, action attack, buying, board, clue, codex, component action, damage, conditions, delayed. We went through here quickly. You've got Destination, Devour, Dice, Disengage, Display, Doom, Elite, Elusive Encounter, Engage, Engage, Evade, Actions, different things that you can do, Event Cards, Event Deck Holder, how to use it, Exhaust, Exhausted, Feed, Focus, so what, basically what these all these terms mean. Focus Action, Gather Resources, Guardians, Half, Headline, Health, Horror. You have Hunter, Investigator, Defeated, Selecting a New Investigator, Investigator's Role, Different items, keywords, leaders, lurkers, marker tokens, massive money, and monster. Move, move, action, mystic, mytho cup, mythos token, neighborhood, neighborhood card, outbreak, place, patrol, older, order, prevent. Prey, ready, reference card, remnant token, research, research, actions, retire, rogue, roll, sanity, scenario, seeker, set aside, shuffle, skill, and space, special cards, a spell. Spend, starting card, street, street card, survivor, talent, test, determining your dice pool, roll dice, 
manipulation, to how to manipulate dice, determined results, traits, watcher, ward action, unstable space, and trade action. So you got 22 pages of information about different cards, about different things that you can do while playing the game. And of course you have your index here of all where to find the information within this tome. And a quick reference sheet for all the icons on the back of this book, which is always very helpful. You got street encounters, finishing encounter, monster cards, mythos tokens, encounter icons, test payments and rewards. And again, this game was brought to you by Fantasy Flight, released in 2018. For more information, go to fantasyflightgames.com. So there you go. You have your learn to play manual and you have your rules reference manual. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in this box. So I got little baggies to keep everything in. Again, this was a used copy of the game that I picked up at an auction. Because I do love the uh, the Cthulhu. Uh, uh, all the stories behind it and all that good stuff. So what do we got here? The Veil of Twilight. Background information, starting space, and the Reckoning. And here's a copy of the map, map key, veil of twilight, what you need in each of the cups that you're preparing for this adventure. So that's the veil of twilight. Another adventure you have here is Feast of the uh, Umord. You have Approach of Asmoth, Echoes of the Deep. And then you have your Investigators, you can choose from all the cards are set up identically. So you have uh, uh, artwork of the character. The, uh, the dilettante, it's Jenny Barnes is her name. Trust fund, action, if you ever fewer than $3, you gain $3. A little quote that's under there. Focus limit one, your, your life, your, and that's your psychic ability. Lore, influence, observation, strength, and will scores. And on the back there, you have starting possessions, you have your background information about the character and the primary role of how they play in the game. So this is a rogue, so that's your first one, that's Jenny Barnes. You have the reporter, Rex Murphy. You have Marie Lambeau, the entertainer. You have Dexter Drake, the magician. You have Daniela Reyes, the mechanic. Agnes Baker, the waitress. Wendy Adams, the urchin. Michael McGlenn, the mobster. Tommy Muldoon, the rookie cop. Calvin Wright, the haunted. Norman Withers, the astronomer. And you have Ming Te Pan, the secretary. Again, all the cards are set up identically. So these are your location cards, your setups. These are your character cards. With the character cards, you also have your standees. They go for each of those. The picture which is, was on the card are the pictures that are here. And you also have the bases for the standees. So these actually, the artwork on these are pretty, pretty great. So let me show you these real quick. Again, you get a little baggy to keep all your good stuff in as well. In a game such as this, which has so many tokens and has so many cards and so much of stuff, it's good to have a baggie which keeps all of your different items um, together so it's easier to take out of the box and get, actually get up and get rolling. So again, it's so easy. You get your base, you take your car guy, and you stick it right in there. Boom. It's on there perfectly, and now you know who your character is. So again, you have all your characters. Front and back show the same. So as you can tell, the picture is the same. That's right here. 
to choose which character you'd like to be, which investigator you'd like to be, shall we say. Got that guy, the mobster. Magician, the dilettante, the curse. So there you have it. Those are all your options for your character standees. Like that, put those right on top of the cards here. Or I should say that. Here's your card holder. I put it together. That's what it looks like, your card holder. Your smaller size D6 die. There you have it. You get six of those. You have your different locations in Arkham. So let's take a look at this. We'll start with the Merchant District. You have the un Unvisited Isle. You have the River Docks. You have TikTok Club. So I'll just show you that a little bit. There you go. Flip that over. You've got the South Side. You've got the South Church. You've got Ma's Boarding House, and you have a Historical Society. Got a lot of stuff here, so I gotta just kind of push this stuff aside and put that right up there. Here we have downtown area, we have Independence Square, you have Arkham Asylum, La Bella Luna. You have Arkham Advertiser, you have the North Side, you have um, Curiosity Shop, and you have the train station. So it's your different locations around the city. You have Arkham Advertiser, you have the North Side again, you have the Curiosity Shop, and the train station. You have Uptown, you have Hangman's Hill, uh, St. Mary's Hospital, the Old Magic Shop, you also have Rivertown, got the Black Cave, got the Graveyard, got the General Store. You have Velma's Diner, Hibbs Roadhouse, this is in East Town, and the police station. Again, all the icons are explained to you in the various rule books and the rules reference guide. And last but not least, you have Velma's Diner again. You have Hibbs Roadhouse, this is in East Town. You have the police station again. And then you have Miskatonic University. You have the Observatory. You have the Orn Library. And you have the, C the Science Building. So that's all of your locations that you can visit and investigate to find clues to solving the riddle. All right. Tokens. We have a large bag of lots and lots of tokens. So let's go through this. Again, this is a used copy of the game, but all the tokens are present. So we have tokens that look like this. I'll take one out to show you. 
Again, these icons are all of them are explained and how to use them are in the core rule books. This is not I show you how to play the game. This is just an unboxing. So it's a tentacle. Front and backs are the same. So that's this one. Two different kinds of tokens here. We have a red one and we have a green one. Take one of each out. So you've got the one side looks like that and the other side looks like this. So that looks like a magnifying glass to me. And then some sort of writing on the back. But you got a bag full of those. Again, you have these in different colors. So I'm gonna try to grab you one of each color. Front and backs are the same, so you've got your orange, plus one. Looks like plus one strength. Maybe plus one intelligence. Maybe plus one towards research or spell casting. Plus one. Vision look like. So those are your five tokens of this type. Again, all these are explained in the core rulebook and in the rules reference guide. So we got a whole bunch of those. Got all their different colors. I've played quite a few different games uh, with the Cthulhu concept, and this is just another one of those games that uh, with the investigators. Uh, I have several other unboxing videos to deal with the Cthulhu um, concept or the you know, investigations, trying to bring the monster down. Uh, this is for your psyche. All of them are the same. one up close real quick. It's the brain with the number one on it. Oh, and there's also, there's also a three in there. Sorry. So you got the big brain of three. Small one's one. Front and backs are the same. You got one, you got three in there. That's all the numbers you have. That's here. You get a big bag of money. Money, honey. Comes in ones and fives. There's your five dollar bill, there's your one dollar bill. Some money, honey. There it is, right there. Then you have some of these tokens which have question marks on one side. And the icon on the other. So all the fronts are the same with the question mark on them. But the backs. You got a cube there. Blue. A couple more white ones. Got the red one. Got the green star. And another white one. So there you have it. Again, those are all the fronts are the same. But again, the colors you have there are the white ones. 
blue, the red, and the and the I'd say they're a yellowish green or a yellow with a green hue to them. So that's more token for you. Again, what they're used for, it's explained in the rulebook. Health tokens, one and three. Let's take one out of each to show you what they look like. Front and backs are the same. So you got a bag full of those. You have these big ones. All of them are identical. Get a bunch of those markers. Looks like you have some investigator tokens as well here. All the fronts are the same. You've got a flashlight. The other side, you have again some markings on a gray portal. Looks like. That one has, that's the only one that's different. It has the flashlight and that symbol underneath it. So I'm not quite sure what these mean. Again, you'll have to look them up in the rule books to get a better idea of what they're used for. And this is not a playthrough video. This is just an unboxing to show you all the components that are included in this core box set of Arkham Park. I got one of these. And the last of the tokens we have are here. And we have a bunch of different ones. The ones with this marking on it. The front and back are the same. Show that. You have some blanks. Your friend, our friend, the Cthulhu. Two of these blue ones. Get the magnifying glasses. We have those. Front and backs are the same again. You get one that looks like this. Get two that look like newspapers. Very cool. All right. And that's all of the tokens that you get. Now, when you're playing miniature games, oh, yeah, for, the, for our boards, you also get walkways that snap in place. So these are your streets that take you from one area of the town to the other. They are all the same. Nope. Take a liar out of me. Okay, so looks like you got a couple sides that have just trees. Okay. So that's how we are uh, correct. All right. All these sides are the same. So it's a walkway with trees. There's a little icon on the bottom. So there you go. Again, flip those this way. So they have it. These are all the same. Look at that artwork up close, real quick. Very cool. And then when you flip those over, you have some additional things that show up. I guess this goes this way. Yep. Looks like a bridge there. Yep, that's a bridge, a lighted bridge. 
looks like more parts of a city or town. Oh, another one of the bridges. So it's roadways that lead you from one side, from one area to another. So you get two bridges and the rest are city streets. So you got one, two, three, four, five city streets and two bridges. Those connect, if I pull this down real quick, these connect very, very easily. Uh, so they just connect right in there like that. Or flip it over, connect very, very easily. There you have it. go in the same direction in the bag Either keep them together that way all right so here's that and again here's all our token we move those back up here and now when we talk about board games that have lots and lots of figures we always show those last so when we have card games i always show the cards last because those are the stars of the show so we've got some blue cards we've got some green cards we got depicting each of the different districts of the towns that we, we talked about earlier. Okay, so they're all different colors. Let's go through them really quickly because we do have a ton of cards. So right here we have the downtown district. All of them are fronts are the same. Arkham Asylum, Independent Square, La Bella Luna. Arkham Asylum, Independent Square, La Bella Luna. So that's for that, that's for that part of the card. So each card gives you different information about each location. So this one here says, sit down, says Dr. Badeau. We're all friends here. You may spend $1 to participate in a group therapy session. If you do, many of the other participants speak of dreams in which they are drowning. You or an ally recovers two sanity and you gain one clue from your neighborhood. The sanity are these right here. That's your sanity tokens right there. Then we'll go down to Independent Square again. Has the icon there. Has the icon up there. Independent Square, a kid with a three card Monty setup will talk about what he saw if you buy something from his uncle. You may buy one common item from the display. If you do, he tells you that he saw dark figures emerging from the river the night before. You gain one clue from your, the neighborhood. Then of course we come down to Bella Luna. You find a clump of seaweed on the floor after a party from out of town guests get up to leave. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. You try to convince the chef that seaweed is a delicacy. If you pass, he is overwhelmingly grateful and happily pays you for it. You gain an additional three bucks. Down here gives you a number. So it, card one, card two, card three, card four. So you do you do an order that way. Okay? So that's that deck. Again, in the next deck, which we have is here, is the merchant district. Again. The river docks, the tick clock, the tick tock club, and you, the unvisited aisle. And these are clues and information that you need for the game. And these go from numbers five to number 10. So one, two, three, four. So these are the clue cards, your, basically your clue cards. And you got a lot of them. So you got this here. This is, of course, for that. The Miskatonic University, and there we have card number 15. So here we have clues from Observatory, Warren Library, and the Science Building. So it looks like it's basically four cards from every section, possibly. Maybe not, what we got here. So that's one full set there of cards. So here we have, this says the north side. So we have the Black Cave, the General Store, and the Graveyard. There's a total of 24 in this portion of the game for those areas there. So this is your north side, and this is River Town. So these cards match the boards up there. So you can tell you what clues you're learning for what section that you go and visit. Then again, here it goes up to 24. So this ends the first set of cards or for the first. Remember, remember these back here, they had a front and back. So 
Black Cave again, general store and graveyard. I don't want to give away too many clues, but there you have that. You also have now 1 through 24. You have Eaton Town again, River Town. So let's go through these. Again, they're numbered on the back. So these cards are sequential. Again, it's another one through 24. So again, this is East Town, River Town, and then East Town. East Towns are the same, just different information on them. Again, Hibbs Roadhouse, Police Station Velma's Diner. And for River Town, you have Black Cave, General Store, and the Graveyard. Again, you have downtown, north side, east town, merchant district, north side, merchant district, downtown, merchant district, north side, merchant district, north side, downtown. And all the cards are set up again the same way. I'm not going to show you the rest. Arkham Independence, Villa Bella, Bella Luna, Arkham Curiosity Shop and Train Station, River Docks, TikTok Club, and Unvisited Isle. So that's, again, clues, again, are done that way. I'm just going to show you the fronts for these. No need to go through all of them. North side, River Town, East Town. All your different cards again. Again, these are all the different clues that you have throughout the game when you're doing your investigations. Remember, your investigator is trying to find out what's happening in a town. And all of them are here. Set up exactly the same way. Hangman's Hill, St. Mary's Hospital, the old magic shop. Again, another set of 24 here. Again, an investigation, your icons are all explained what they're used for. And here they are. You have a whole bunch of those. So you get a stack, basically, of investigator cards. So I'm going to keep them this way so you can see what those are for. Those are your clue cards, basically. Then you also have some more here. These are your encounter cards. So these are, this is considered, this is considered your event deck. Actually, this is your event, your event, event deck. So your encounter cards are things that you run into when you go to those areas. Again, the areas are all the same as they are on your boards up there. Your train boards, okay. And the back of these, these are a little different. So let's take a look at the first one. It says because I don't want to give away any secrets. So, Merchant District, flip this one over. It'll tell you River Docks, Tic Tac Club, and Unvisited Isle. Again, it'll tell you one through cards one through eight. So you'll see each one, eight of eight. So it's different sections and different encounters that you're gonna go depending on where you're at, which tile you're on, okay? So you've got Merchant District. Just flip this one over real quick. River Docks, TikTok Club, and Unvisited Isle. It says here, you heard, uh, you've heard that if you wake, uh, if you make an offering during the full moon, a water spirit will favor you. You may spend three dollars on one remnant to drop your offering into the reflection of the moon. If you do, a pair of large glistening eyes breach the surface of the water and gaze at you with approval. You become blessed. And then TikTok Club. All the clocks in here are set to different times. It's soothing, like like time itself has ceased to exist. You kick back your heels and try your hardest to relax you may spend a dollar to get something to eat and drink if you do the drink and jazz ease your worries you you or an ally recovers two health and two sanity on visit the aisle your flashlight picks out faded carvings on one of the tall standing stones if you pass you sense uh you sense residual arcane energy from some foul ritual you gain one remnant if you fail something small but quick leaps at your face before scuttling off into the darkness you suffer one horror so that's how all those cards are. And again, this is your encounter deck. So when you're running into different things, again, the different colors, it tells you different parts of the city that you're going to the uptown, east town, north side, the streets. The streets are these right here, the streets. The streets of Arkham. 
Here again, this would be the downtown area. This is your river town area. South side. Miskatonic University, and of course, what we started off with, which would be the Merchant District. And again, this is your encounter deck bag for those. That's your event deck, as I said before. And we have two more decks of cards. You have a large size, and this is your reference, headline, archive, and anomaly decks. And you can tell because each deck is a little different. So this one has different covers. Different parts of the city. Some horrors on it. Another artwork on that one. So let's look those are. Again, Nightmare Breach. And it tells you different things. Okay. Zero. The sound of chanting comes from a tunnel beneath the street. If you pass, some untapped parts of your brain begins to make sense of the words. Remove one doom from any space in your neighborhood. If you fail, you find yourself chanting the words as well. You suffer too horror. Over here, you wake from a dream and desperately try to make sense of what you saw. If you pass scenes of sunken cyclopean towers, gradually fade from your memory. You remove one doom from your space. If you fail, you believe you have just witnessed a glimpse of Arkham's future. You suffer one horror. And last but not least here, the statues are coated with milfoil and draped with weeds. You try to clean them. If you pass, you keep some of the plant for yourself. You remove three doom from your space and gain one remnant. If you fail, you, you, your cleaning uncovers drowned, bloated corpses, not statues. You suffer two horrors. So again, that kind of information is on everything. So that's your nightmare breach, your fractured reality, your temporal fissure. So the temporal fissure looks like that. Your fractured reality looks like that. And your nightmare looks like that. Those are your cards. Then we also have here try get, okay. You also have your player action cards here. I just found those in the deck, so I can show you these as well. So it tells you what you can do on your turn, which is you can move, you can gather resources, you can focus, you can ward, you can attack, evade, research, trade. While engaged with a monster, you can only focus, attack, or evade. And you flip that card over. These are your phases of the game. The action phase, the monster phase, the encounter phase, the mythos phase. So in action phase, you perform up to two actions. You can perform each action no more than once per round. While engaged with the monster, you can only focus, attack, or evade. Monster phase. Each ready monster activates usually by moving. A monster that moves into your space engages you. Each engaged monster deals damage and horror to the investigator it is engaged with. Each exhausted monster readies. And it says encounter phase. You draw and resolve an encounter matching your space, unless you are engaged with a monster. And then you have your mythos phase. You draw two tokens from mythos cup and resolve their effects one at a time. All investigators do this in player order. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six player aids. You have those. We'll put over here. You have your headlines, which look like this. So you have a bunch of oh. so you have them in, in numbered sequence once again 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to go this way again. I do not want to ruin the game for anybody because I don't want to give away any clues because it is an investigation game. So again, 
You have the outbreak, you have the anomalies, you have deja vu. No title for this one here. It says the profane ritual, time unstuck, ritual site, a strange barrier. This one says Azoth awakened, the future, fresh meat, the hunger below, and the false faces. So let's take a look at the first one, which is the outbreak. Windows are shut, curtains drawn, doors locked. Citizens hurry through the streets, casting glances over their shoulders. A sinister unease gathers in this city, lurking on the rooftops and pooling in every shadow. As dread mounts, people and animals react in unpredictable ways, fleeing or lashing out at those around them. And with each new outbreak of fear and violence, the Ancient One grows stronger. If a space has four or more doom, remove three doom from that space. Then place one doom in each other space in that neighborhood and one doom on the scenario sheet. Put that over real quick. Oh, so front and back are the same. Okay, then you have anomalies, like I said, those here. So these uh, could be your these could be your anomaly cards. I'm not sure. Again, you have to look up in the rule book what kind of cards these are. But that's those are. Uh, here we have ah these are your headlines. So as you can tell, all kinds of headline cards we have here. Again, we have as you can tell there are different newspaper clippings. All of them are the same. So when you look at that, so I'm just going to read random ones so you have 32 different headlines that you can use so let's do the first one so don't give too much away we have no one we have no one to blame but ourselves opinion our choices have placed us on this path new civic engagement required advertiser declares its share of blame by the different people who wrote it it says headline place two doom in your space unless you gain a dark pack condition if you are in a street space place the doom in adjacent neighborhood space instead Cursed treasures brings money problems. The, this money is the root of all evil. Treasure once belonged to a pirate. Marsh family of Innsmouth claims treasure is theirs. Headline, test something and resolve the effect based on your test result. Zero, you become cursed. One to two, you gain $3 and become cursed. Plus three plus, you gain $3. There you go. So those are your newspaper headings. That's another deck of cards we have here. And then we have these as well, which are the different creatures that you could run into. You have Cthulhu, you have the Servitor of Rila. Rila rises, and this is just basically um, it's telling you where, what, who, and things of that nature. Back to the wall. More information here. So at the beginning of the game, you saw over here we had the numbers where they go up here so we have outbreak one goes up to 12 and then the remainder of those cards go go from here 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 so it tells you the story which i do not want to ruin for you so it goes from numbers one on the front up to 40 as you see it right here okay and again i do not want to ruin the storyline for you because it actually is very, very cool. So I don't want to ruin anything for you. So that, so those are all your regular or large size cards. Again, here we had our, we had our event deck here. Over here we had our player, uh, player help cheat sheet cards. Here we had our encounter cards. Over here these these three decks are the reference, the headline, the archive, and the anomaly cards. The last one we have here are our mini cards. So we have some blue cards, which look like investigator cards. Yep, Jenica Capra, Alice Luxley. Tells you whether they're an ally, so it gives you a picture of the character. It gives you who it is, it Tells you, and it gives you a little background about them. So it says, or what their power is. So Jenica Capra, ally, mystic, bounty hunter. Or after you defeat a monster as part of an attack action, you may remove one doom from your space. So you got Alex Luxley, Arthur Johnson, Delphina Bell, Grace Beckman, Gabriel Carrillo, Henry Wan, Leland uh, Williams, Louis Hayes, Sasha Higa, this is Zora Larson, 
uh, a Tuso uh, Mori. So these are allies that will help out your investigators accomplish what they need. So these are your allies. So your blue cards, your mini cards are your allies. Then you have your mini cards, which are your green cards. Grimm's, these are your item cards. So you can get Grimm's Fairy Tales, Tattered Cloak, Magnifying Glass, Silver Key, Occult Scripture, Otherworld Codex, it says item, Curio Tome, you get plus three something as part of a ward action, Token of Faith, Liquid Courage, Lucky Cigarette Case, Mystic Tome, Pocket Watch, Knife, Shotgun, Fine Clothes, Painkillers, 45 Automatic, First Aid Kit, 45 Thompson, Rabbit's Foot, Elder Sign Amulet, Mystic Scroll, Bulletproof Vest, Dynamite, Derringer, Leather Coat, 38 Revolver, Grotesque Statue, and a Secret Page. All these are your items, which are in the green. Okay, blue is allies, green are investigators. Then you have purple mini cards. These are the different spells. Mr. Rylot, it's a spell incantation. You may test blank in place of blank as part of an evade action. The monsters evade, a modifier still applies. It tells you the cost value of these up here. So this al 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 alchemical process, astral travel, blinding, fine gate, wither, flesh ward, healing words, intervene, and shriveling. Uh, it's a spell, it's a ritual action. You have to test at minus one. One monster in your space or an adjacent space suffers damage equal to your test result. You can perform this action while engaged with a monster. It tells you your cost up top. So again, these are your spells. You got lots and lots of mini cards. Then we have cards that look like this. These are your item cards again. Abandoned luggage, wooden homoclus, uh, age of rods, you have, another, you have another ally that you could find, Daniel Chesterfield, Dark Blessings, Performers, uh, Stray Dog, so, uh, Steve Dorr, uh, Insmith Look, Black Cat, Carver, uh, Clover Club Member, Diana Experience, Deputy of Arkham, Ezra Graves, Ally, University Professor. Actually, you may spend two remnants and suffer one direct horror to gain one ally. Grave Digger, Lita Chandler, Rare Books, Reporting Gig, Server at Velma's, Service Piece, Stray Cat, Hunting Dog, Mysterious Serum, Contraband Whiskey, Astro Lab, and The Moon. Again, these are all item cards. Then we have some Then you have these cards, which have different photos of different people on them. So it's your starting deck for your investigators. So if we look at this, this gentleman here, who is Norman Withers, the astronomer, astronomer gets four cards. And with the four cards, three, I'm sorry, three cards. Flip them over, he starts off with an astronomy book which is an item, he starts off with a spell, and another item, so he has a fine gate and precious memento. That's his starting deck. Jenny Barnes starts off with uh, three things also, dressed to the nines, Jenny's twin 45s, and search for Izzy, and so on and so forth for all your other characters. So again, what are some of the things that you start with? It all comes together, overcome all odds, search for the truth. The Tower, Grand Mirror's Knight, Intervene, a Witch Blood, Astral Travel, Magician's Cane, Miss Aryla, Abandoned Member, A Boiler, Chicago Typewriter, Heirloom of Hyperbia, Storm of Spirits, Flesh Ward, Gabriel, Ace of Swords, Wrench, Becky, Handcuffs, Motorcycle, King in Yellow, Synergy, An Analytical Mind, Mysterious Photo, Mama's Amulet, Mr. Pa Peter, Mr. Paul Turson, Until the End of Time, Voice of the Messenger, Spirit Dagger, Astronomy Book, Fine Gate, 
Precious Memento, Dress to the Nines, Jenny's Twin 45s, and Search for Izzy. So again, those are all linked to the starting cards for your, depending on which character you choose to be, or which investigator, I should say, you become. So that's these cards here. Which I'll actually take these and put those over here by her. We got a couple more cards here. We have also what we call your blessed cards and your dark packed cards. So on one side it says condition while resolving a test, fours, fives, and sixes count as successes. After you fail a test, this card, this card, if you would become cursed, this card, this card instead. And if you're going to be cursed while resolving a test, only sixes count as successes. After you pass a test, this card, this card, if you would become blessed, this card, this card instead. That's your blessed cards. Then you get dark packed. All the all the pictures are the same. It says condition. Reckoning, roll one die. On a one, your debt has come due. Flip this card. This die roll is not a test. Do not look at the back of this card until you are instructed to do so. So I will not read the back for you, but I'll just say it gives you clues. It says the world undone, path of sacrifice, forbidden knowledge, ultimate price, dark destiny, and an alliance of evil. So I will not read those because it tells you not to read them. That's more cards that you get. And last but not least, you have all these cards. And these look like they are monster cards, which they are. So you have the Ryla Guardian, the Wake Titan, Tindalus Alpha, Nightmarish Fiend, Corpse Taker, the Sea Singer, River Skulk, Avian Thrall, Abyssal Servant, Void Touched, Twilight Supplicant. So let's take a look at this. It's a monster. It's a Lodge Human. Down here, I'll tell you, he has one wound. Minus zero, minus zero. He's elusive. This monster does not engage investigators in its space. Yog Sagoth knows the gate. Yog Sagoth is the gate. So, we got that guy here. Alma Hill, Shoreline Brute, Masked Hunter, Lupine Thrall, Kneeing Hound, Ghoul Priest, Creeping Ghoul, Vicious Glutton. We have Swift Baki, Simon Carter. Shadow, Shallows Predator, Ravenous Predator, Ocean Scion, Lodge Loyalist, Hulking Thrall, Herman Collins, Ghoul Acolyte, a Flesh Eater, Altered Servant, Altered Beast, Cult Ritualist, Masked Ones, Eyeless Watcher, Wolfman Drew, Lodge Enforcer, Billy Koopa, Ruth Turner, a robbed figure, a hybrid thug, a hooded stalker, high priest, and the Whipperill. So let's take a look at that real quick. It's a monster, it's a beast. Again, one health, minus zero, minus one. Watcher, this monster does not restrict your actions or encounters, it moves with you. Roll. You roll one fewer die while resolving tests. So something that hooks onto you. So those are your monster cards. And in the front, they all have the artwork for them. And the artwork is just stunning for this game. Really, really gives you that 1920s feel of monsters and mayhem that are coming at you. So your nightmares coming to reality of Lovecraftian theme. Again, the artwork is spectacular. That one's really cool. I really like that masked guy. Yeah. Cultists, various different beasts, and anom uh, anomalies and creatures that you will go, of course, the baddie himself. So there you have it. Take a couple of these cards and put these up here as well. Push that in a little bit. So everything you see here is included, and this concludes our unboxing. Made it in just under an hour. This is everything that's included in the unboxing for Arkham Horror 
Again, this is the core box set brought to you by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, games. Uh, it's a board game of arcane mystery and so supernatural terror for one to six players. Uh, it's, again, for ages 14 plus, one to six players, and it takes between two to three hours to play the game. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you could always give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. You could also hit that subscribe button. This way you're kept up to date with and keep up to date and learn about any new releases that we post to our page. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day. We'll catch you on the next unboxing video.